Hi there and welcome to my channel again. In this video, I'll be taking you with me through a couple of new art journal pages, all with the theme Japan. We also did a lesson in my studio, so you will see some students' results in Japanese style in this video again. So in this video, I tell you a bit more about how I deal with reference material created by other artists and at the same time to be true to your own style. I have some books with amazing pictures. The book with old Japanese prints is by far my favorite. I also browsed through some books by Vincent van Gogh and Henri Toulouse-Lautrec. At the end of the 19th century, Japan was an inspiration for many artists. So the question is how to recognize Japanese style also in work from European painters who adopted this style. One, a style with lines like cartoons or anime. Two, using a very dimmed color palette with its only dominant color red. Three, using Japanese characters mainly in blocks somewhere on the side of the illustration. Four, the art is often inspired by nature. Five, using another perspective, often diagonal lines. Six, they are often using a frame with decorations. So in my art journal, I created three spreads, three double pages because I could, couldn't stop. It was so much fun to do. And for the first page, I went for the geisha on this page. And my first advice is to go for something that really speaks to you. And from this woman, I really adored the, the soft pink, the pale pink, pale, well, green gold, I can almost say. And I loved the patterns. So that was my first thing that I really liked about this page. So go for something that you really love to do and really love to work with. I already created a background for this page. So that was something that I did differently from the original. So that's also why her skin has another tone than the original. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same. So most of the things I copied directly from my reference image, but some things I did change. For example, I thought she needed to be needed to have a more friendly um well appearance so i did something else with the eyes i made them more like in one line these are really like diagonal so i i thought it was good when you work with something that you are not familiar with for example something from another culture uh, you come across things that you really don't understand you are like what is she wearing in her hair and how is a kimono looking exactly? Because I haven't seen them in 3D. I haven't seen them many times, uh, not many times in my life. Um, I can't even remember. So for me, this was really the question. How are all the folds? How, how is she wearing it? Uh, so that was the hardest thing to me, for me and also for a couple of my students. And even Martelt uh, wrote a haiku about the, the hairstyle and uh, that's really funny. You will see it at the end of the video. The right page with the geisha on it is for me the most dominant page. And I had here uh, a page with burlap and I thought it would be fun to just freestyle, do something with the elements that are already there and repeat them. I found this uh, lovely piece of fabric with exactly the same color as that. And also the black, I'm normally not using black very much. So this is coming back on this page as well. And this is the colors that are also appearing in, uh, well, one of the elements of the kimono. And here I just simply put a piece of, I think it's Lokta paper. And this is also a funny detail because 
I wanted to incorporate the characters, but I really felt that I didn't want to copy them. Uh, I found it very hard to do so. So I simply took some transfer paper and I copied it straight from the book. I laid it down on this part and I simply copied it and it's you don't see even that it's transfer paper. Um, here I made some characters myself. So um, it was a bit weird to do because you don't know what the text is. So if anybody knows what's what's standing here, I really don't know. Uh, often those prints were used for commercials. So it would be something from maybe the kimono or I don't know where it where it's a commercial for, but I think it has to do something with what she's wearing. You also see that I made a cutout because there was a face appearing on the other side of the page as well. So that would be page, I will come back to that later. But when you look at the other page here, her face is also coming back on this page. So this was really fun, studying, copying and well, kind of improving my skills. And this was freestyling. And I see I've forgotten to fill in a piece of pattern. For my second page, I decided to work with a cat image. I really love this. I don't know who the artist is. I even don't know how I've got this. So I don't know, but um, I wanted to use some of those blocks you, you often see uh, very vertical blocks in a line. And here I decided to do just three. I simply <laughs> didn't thought about what would be my composition. I, I made three of those um, yeah, blocks, areas. And I did some freestyling color-wise. I used some other colors. For the cats, I found it really interesting uh, what they look like, uh, what's their mood. This one is ready to attack, this one is laying down, this one is sleeping. So that's a good thing when you want to improve your skills on doing the eyes, doing uh, the posture, uh, the pose of a cat. It's very fun to do. And well, this was just freestyling. It was a cozy afternoon with my daughter-in-law and she's a cat lover as well. So we decided to paint and it was just relaxed to do something a bit inspired by this image. And on my final page, I worked on this woman. On this page, I already created a background and I saw a face in it. So there were two faces now, and the first thing that I've done was making a cutout so that you could see her face when you're looking at these pages, and you can see her face as well looking at this page. So that was my first thing. So now I worked out the face, and it was an intuitively made face so I started from my own intuition and my own well what just came up instead of working out of reference material I wanted to add a dress in Japanese style and browsing through my Toulouse Lautrec and other books I couldn't find any pose where a person is looking down I think people were all walking with a back straight and I couldn't simply found uh, people standing like this with a head down, kind of dreamy. So I suddenly had the idea of using my fashion book and it's fashion book from, I think it starts in 1900 and then it goes to now. Um, and I found these lovely dresses and also a woman looking down, almost in the same pose as my figure was. I just had a hat, so I just had to find out how the shoulders were and how the arms and the rest of it. So I couldn't choose between those dresses actually because I liked them both and I made a combination. So I took this part from this dress 
the upper part I took from this dress and this part is adopted from the image, the image on the left side. I still had some space in my background, so I decided I wanted to do some Japanese cherry blossoms and the moon, but I had more space on the left side of my page and here there's more blossom on the right side. So I kind of mirrored it and uh, did it the other way around. So this is kind of my left page and I'm very satisfied about it. And then on the right page, it was just some freestyling again with using fabrics in the colors that are already here. Um, so the pink, the red, this is, I think this is from Nepal, but it's also Asia. So I thought it could be a very good thing here. And there's a, a little, uh, it's not a haiku, but it's a quote out of Zen. The translation is, what's missing on this moment? I think nothing's really missing because it's wonderful. This all combined. Here you can see my students' results. They really had a lot of ideas and the pages became very different. One thing that everybody has tried to do was write down some Japanese characters to study. And again, I am very proud of them. So that was it for this week. I hope you feel inspired to create a Japanese page yourself. If you want to see more, I have a time lapse where I fully create a page and you can see the process. I put it in the end screen and I hope to see you next time.